Isha Isha Gaga, 
arugbo ojo apata idigbolu apata ye raye o eyin lo lo arun agbaye mo gbe o ga o what shall i say on to the lord all i want to say is thank you oh All I want to say is you are called a yashadaru. Oh, but come on, go go to see the show, go go. Is thank you, Lord. My God, my Father, Olorun mi, oko mi, ore mi, Olowo ore mi, alabo mi, Olopese mi, alanu mi, Olore ofe, giga, 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 Obala to show. All I want to say is thank you. Son and Holy Ghost, the great hand that I am dead, kill the one who was for his and is to come. I rather repeat, I repeat, Robert, I put ye ge 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 Thank you, thank you, Lord. Oloro toto yi. Oloro toto bega. Mungboy dile jese. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For everything you have done. I will sing on. Shed 
for you and me. The blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks for his sin. The blood of Jesus that forget for you. The blood that I forget for me. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the washed away I see. I just. Eja, tu foi chamar a mão. Eja, 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 Christi, eja, tu sou a dama. Aleluia. Amen. The book of Psalm 107 said, from, uh, read the first verse, it said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on the cross for us. He shed it on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to a moment in the Word of God, the channel whereby we discuss about the Word of God together. We meditate on the Word of God and everything that is being spoken about on this channel is based on the Word of God in the Holy Scripture, in the Bible. This afternoon, like I have earlier, praise my Father, my Lord, my God. Our God, your Father, your Lord, your God. For we are all creatures of His hands. You, know, for people that are familiar with my channel, you know I love to sing to my Father in heaven. I praise Him. Some of my videos are mainly songs of praise to my Father in heaven, and more videos will be following soon. That will be of more afro kind of not just afro but more of afro more afro gospel song so that is part of the future plan the nearest future to be precise plan that i've got which uh, i have already started working towards it more fingers crossed because this channel is based on anything religious, biblical, and moral. When we talk about moral, moral also has to do with faith and uh, self-discipline and everything. But the bottom line is that everything that is being posted on this channel is based on biblical teaching. And the biblical word of God as a guide us as his people, as his children, to come before him and live in his fear. We have to live our lives in the fear of God. We have to do everything that we do with the fear of God in us. We have to obey his commandment and his will. And having said this, I want to quickly chip something here. For some of us that do not know this, that is why I want to chip this in. I spoke in my previous video that my, my lifestyle, I personally am a woman of faith. And I do things based on faith, mostly. And like I said, faith is the hope, what you are hoping for. 
or expectation of what you are hoping and looking for uh, to what to God for but when you have faith in him and you wait patiently on him you will receive what you're trusting him for that is what faith is all about we take a, a bold step of faith sometimes we have to we need to take that bold step of faith sometimes for us to be able to, you know, realize what we are trusting God for. And that is where, where faith and work comes in. My apology for the background noise because uh, activity is going on. And I apologize for that. And that is why I said that I'm looking for somewhere suitable, like a studio where things can be done without distraction or background noise or anything like that. So when we take that both step of faith, in, in times of that, that is faith and work. Because faith without work can be like a kind of dormant thing. If we're trusting God and we do not walk towards it, we do not take the bold step towards what we are believing and trusting him for. What we have faith in. Or, uh, you know, when we, what we have faith in God for. Then we might be there waiting forever. So that is where faith and work comes in. And um, yeah, for every children of God, where we have faith, we, our work must complement our faith. And I've had a series of testimonies from people that will say, you know what? I don't have any hope anywhere. But I just took that step of faith. And because I took the step of faith, God manifest himself mightily, greatly because of the step of faith that I took. He showed himself to me that it is truly a God that answers prayers. And it's truly a God that does not joke with his words. When he said, anyone that trusts in him will not be put to shame. And that is work and faith. Work and faith complement each other. When we have faith without work, then our faith can be, you know, might be like a kind of a dead thing because there's no work. We are not working towards what we trust God for. We are not working towards our faith in God. So, I know it takes courage, even for me as well, that I am talking about this. It takes courage for someone, you know, to take a bold step towards what we are trusting God for. It takes courage. I would like to you. Uh, because, you, you, you know, many people, many of us will be like, ah, I don't want to ridicule myself. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I'll put it that way in Yoruba language for the people that understand Yoruba language. They know what I mean. I don't want to overestimate myself, knowing fully well that I don't have this, I'm not capable of this or of, of that. But sometimes, God needs us to walk towards our faith, what we believe in. And having said this, I want to quickly also mention this. Giving Tight and offering in the household of God is like you are investing, investment with God. When you invest into the household of God, when you invest into the ministry, the work of God, it's like you are when you invest into the work of God, into the ministry of God, you can never regret it. Because God sees what we do, the works of our hands. And based on that, God actually really, really, really reward everyone according to the works of our hands. And what most people do not know and what most nation and country do not know is that kingdom promoters, investors into the household of God, into the works of God through our offering, through our tithe, most especially our tithe. Kingdom promoter, when you give your tithe, according to the book of Malachi, 
that he said we should give our tithe. In the book of Mark Lottery, chapter 3, when he said we should give our tithe, in the book of Malachi, it gave, it, 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 there, was, there is a series of promises there in that book of Malachi for every tithers, for everyone that give offering in the household of God. And the Bible said we shouldn't come to the household of God empty-handed. When we go to worship before him, we mustn't go to the household of God empty-handed. Even though Having said this, he understand if we do not, God understand if we do not have to give at all, he understand. And for the ones of us that do not have to give at all, I want to bring our attention to that Bible chapter that Jesus Christ spoke about give us in the household of God. Giving of offering. Everybody came into the household of God to worship in that their Bible chapter that I'm talking about. And everyone gave bountifully out of the surplus that they've got. But our Lord Jesus Christ pointed out a particular woman that is really, really poor. She's in lack. She's poor. She, she's in want. She's needy. But all that she's got out of that lack, the all that she's got left, she gave it in the household of God. She offered it as offering in the household of God. Without any hope or expectation as to where it would get any money for survival or to even get home. Let's put it nowadays, nowadays, transportation. And Elijah just said, the, the, ask the people around him, including the disciples, that who is the one that gave most? And his response, his reply to the answers that the people gave was that that woman, that poor woman the, that was wretched and in lack and need, even though she gave very little that she gave most because she gave all that she ever hoped for to God, and God blesses her. That offering was acceptable before God. So it is important, no matter what, to give in the household of God. It is important to bring our offering before Him when we come to Him for worship, to worship God. We mustn't worship God in, uh, we mustn't come before God empty handed. Even, we, we, even if we don't have, even, we, even, even, even when we are in lack, we still have to give. Oh, if we have, let me put it this way, if we have like five cents, we can give out of that five cents and keep the remaining literally that we have left to ourselves but we must ensure that we should we mustn't come to the house of the God empty and dead because the will and commandment of God is that we must give offering in this household we mustn't come to him before him to worship empty and dead and that is why I said that we should bring food to his household so that his servant his people his, his servant the minister in his household so that they, they, they do not live in lack or want. When we do this, when we take care of the servant of God, we take care of this, his, 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 his minister, his chosen one. He said everything we do to his servant, we, we are doing it to him. He sees and recognizes it as we doing it to him. And if we remember also what he said about the people that were at the gate on the last day. And he said, come into my, your father's rest, you faithful servant. For when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was sick, you visited me. 
When I was homeless, you sheltered me. When I was naked, you clothed me. You see, because the people actually ask, oh, Lord, when did we see you and do all these things to you? When did we see you and do all these things to you? And he said, as you have done it, since you have done it to this ones, you did it to me. So everything we do to others, everything we do for or give or do to the servant of God, we are doing it to God. We are rendering a service to God and it is recognized. According to the Bible, the Bible established that. It is recognized. God sees, he knows, and we are not doing it to that people, those people we are looking at. We're doing it to God. And that's why I said his household must not be in lack. That we should bring food to his household so that his children, his servant, so that the, the, the servant of God will not go hungry or, or be in lack. And that is the confirmation of it in the Bible when he said to them, Go into your father's rest, you faithful servant. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was homeless, you sheltered me. When I was sick, you visited me. Because it is the will and commandment of God. And for Titus that are promoting the work of God, the ministry of God, that are promoting the household of God, like he has promised in the book of Malachi, that promise is for those people that are faithful in, in giving their tithe. But not just them. Where is that money coming from? The nation, the people that bless those people and they give their tithe at the household of God. The country that bless those people and they give their tithe in the household of God. What most people do not realize also is that they also become automatically beneficiary of the blessings of God. Most people do not realize this. And that's why most people will be like, how are they doing it? When the enemy is at work and they're ready to like subject the nation into penury, into poverty, and they all their efforts, they, they, they try and try and try and try. But all of their efforts prove abortive because that nation is a nation where people are titans. And wherever the money is coming from, because the source of that money that is blessing the children of God to be able to tithe from what they are being blessed with, definitely will also enjoy from the benefit of the, of the word of God that is in the book of Malachi, the same way the tithe also do. Indirectly, titans are not only promoting the household of God, they are also promote, promoting, titans are also promoting the pause of the nation. Because God looks at the source and they replenish the source of the titan so that the titan can come again at the appointed time that they give their tithe, to give to the household of God again and again and again. And God also increases and bless the tithe. Not only the tithe, but the source of the income also become blessed. Most people do not know this. And when the enemy wants to attack, that is why givers in the household of God, tithers, People that bless and promote the household of God are the first primary target to render a nation poor or to make a nation go into penury. This is the revelation of the word of God. And most of us need to know this. That whatever we do as a people, as a country, as a nation, when we, when we bless the children of God, now I'm talking about here in general. When we bless the people of God, the nation of God, the children of God, 
which include the servant of God, pastors, prophets of God, just name it, ministers of God, the people that, the, the, the chosen of God that he has called to the ministry to, you know, go out and spread the word of God. When we bless the people of God, we are automatically blessing God that those people serve. We are blessing our Father in heaven. And when we bless our Father that is in heaven, it will bless us back in return in many fold. And for the people that God has put it in their heart to bless a servant and they refuse. The Bible said, if like, oh, I'm not giving our money anymore. We're not, uh, I, can't be, I can't be enriching other people's purse. And I will be like, they, 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 they take the, the, the money. Some people believe that, oh, servants of God are, 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 are taking people's money to enrich themselves, to enrich their life, to enrich their purse. They take my money, what I work hard for, they take it, and this and that. They are busy rolling it around in their head what the servant of God do or does with the money that is being brought into the household of God. But the Bible said, it is none of our, our business what they do with it. They are children of God. We are all children of God. We are all children of the Spirit. Every servant of God, every people of God are being guided by the Spirit of God what to do with the money that is being brought into the house of God. Well, by the, but the Bible established it and made it clear to us that we should bring food into his household so that a servant, so that a servant will not live in lack or want. Whatever the servant of God do with the money that is being brought into the household of God, it's not our business. It is between the servant of God and God himself that call a servant to his bind yard. And this is where many people fall into sin without even realizing it. It is not in our place. To put um, uh, uh, to, to, to pop nose into what we are not supposed to pop nose to. It is not in our place to do so. Uh, ours is to give in the household of God. Our duty is to bless the household of God. To make sure there is food in the household of God, to make sure that servants of God do not live in lack, to make sure that the household of God's got food to give to the poor. Because the household of God also is a center where the poor also get blessed. Based on experience, I've seen servants of God that at the end of the day, the offering the blessings of God that comes into the church. They give it to the people that are less privileged, the needy, and bless the needy. Some will bring food to the house of the God. And the needy goes there to collect food because they have nothing whatsoever to, to eat. Everyone, based on how they are being directed by the Spirit of God. But it is between the servant of God and God himself what they do with the offering that is being brought into the house of God. It is not our business. It is between God and his servant. And as a servant of God, God has spared every servant of his to be faithful with what he has placed in the care of his servant. When God places something in our care, we must be faithful with it. This is part of the responsibilities that need to be taken up by the servant of God based on the guidance and the direction of the Holy Spirit. It is not our responsibilities. Because most people look at, oh, 
know the numbers of people in the church, what they give. And they'll be like, I'm not, uh, I'm not giving my offering, I'm not giving my tithe in the household of God for someone that will now take the money to go and buy a private jet. <laughs> Why can't we just leave there the whatever the, the servant of God do with the money? Why can't we leave it between God and the servant of God? Now, as his children also, as the follower of Christ, if our spirit say, stop paying tight, go to another church, whatever, every children of God, we are children of the spirit. As the spirit lead us, we, can, we are meant and supposed to follow whatever the spirit of God lead us to do. But like I said earlier, when we don't give in the household of God because we are looking at what uh, the amount we are calculating. Some people are very good at calculating. They estimate it in their head. And they will be like, and that will dissuade them from giving in the household of God. When we do that, we shut the door against ourselves. And the source of the money also, we shut the door against the source of the money. Where the money comes from, we shut the door against it. Every children of God, every servant of God, I'll put it that way, every servant of God that is being led by the Spirit, knows, by the Spirit of God, knows when God said, that source of money, don't mix it up with the, the money in the church. Get rid of it. They know and they will do according to the direction of the will of God or his commandment. And that money, get rid of it. The source of that money is not a money that you can put with the church money because it's either it's blood money or a money that was made or realized out of a simple or immoral way. And it's more complex than we think, but for every servant of God, we need to know that every servant of God has the responsibility between himself and God to do exactly as the word of God said, based on the offering or, or tithe or whatever that comes into the household of God. And that is a business between the servant of God and God, not our business. When we make it our business, that is a device of the enemy to make us not do the will of God and we shut the door against ourselves when we do not do his will and his commandment. We shut the door against ourselves. We shut the door against the source of the money. And the more the money increases, the more offering we give, the more tithe we give. And the more we increase, the more the source of the money increases as well. Well, the word of God, the Bible made us understand that the source of our money must be a clean source. We must know that, note that as the source of our money must be a clean source. And may God, the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, help us all in the name of Jesus Christ. So, a quick reminder. A, a giver nation is not only giving the people that is a giver. A nation that is a giver, you are not only giving to the people you think you are giving to, to the household of God alone, but you are giving to God. And when you give, you receive. Your mama's open or what funny. When you are a giver, you will never lack. She go out. Someone will stingy and you clench your hand that I will not release. A clenched hand cannot receive. We need to know this. And we need to remember this always. And that is on that. Now to the Bible chapter that we are treating for today. I just want to quickly chip in those few words that I chipped in for us to know that it is a good thing 
to bless the servant of God, to bless the household of God. And we must remember when we do it, what is the state of our heart. 